Hi, I'm Ryan Neal. Welcome back to The Vulgar Skill. Um, today we're going to be starting our series talking about the montante. Um, the montante is many people's introduction to Godinho's system. It's usually the first thing they see when they uh, look into Godinho's fencing or his system. They find people using the, these huge swords and doing all sorts of cool sweeping cuts, fighting multiple people, and it's an important part of the system. The reason I'm going into it is, one, that I believe that it should be taught alongside the single sword at the same time because it teaches the beginner good body mechanics, how to drive the sword with the body as opposed to the arms. Because if you try to drive the montante with just your arms, you're going to get very tired or you're going to hurt yourself. And also because it is a great way to practice solo and at home. And um, given the current conditions with the pandemic and everything, I want to give people more solo practice options. This introductory video is going to be mostly talking because chapter one for Godinho's Montante is mostly sort of laying groundwork. So, let me take my hidden in the grass Montante here. Uh, this is an arms and armor Montante trainer. So Godinho opens with the fact that people tend to make the grave mistake with this weapon of flourishing with it. He says that sometimes people have died because they've tripped or very, or they've become so wounded they've dropped their weapon and other things that he says are basically beyond your control. But he also talks about that people have gotten killed with this weapon because they tend to flourish with it. He gives the example that somebody had their sword broken by this weapon and chose to flourish instead of finishing the job and was defeated by the guy's dagger. So the first point here is while this may look like a flashy weapon, a lot of the rules I'm gonna show you, and there is always time to be a fancy lad and do flourishes. When you are fighting, that is not that time. Um, the second thing he talks about is the that when you step with this weapon, that your steps are going to be heavy and measured, not like those of a dancer. So your big thing you're going to be learning with this weapon is the ability to be rooted, to stay down, and to not like sort of float or jump or spring, because if you don't carry this weapon if you don't sink your weight this weapon will carry you another key point he talks about is when you go out with this thing at night you carry it in your left hand if you're right-handed diagonally you don't wear it on the back as some do and by wear on the back i don't think he means like this back scabbard that you never really see because good luck drawing this weapon but more likely it's sort of set up on the back so that you can remove the whole thing and then take off the scabbard he also says don't wear it with a scabbard at night um, because of a few reasons, but the main reason he gives is that, and this is one of my favorite Godinho principles to teach people, no evidence. He talks about you don't leave hats behind, you don't leave scabbards behind, you leave nothing behind um, so that people could tell who's been there. And the scabbard is just one more thing you're going to possibly lose, and then you left evidence behind, and then you're going to be in trouble with the law. Um, this is interesting because also in Sword and Shield, he says that when you would take the Montante, you should use a light scabbard with it and test it first. Um, so it's unclear if he changes his mind and says, well, no scabbard. Or if he's just saying no scabbard at night, but during the day, wear a light scabbard that you've tested, that it'll like come off easily. Um, and he, that's basically the synopsis of what he largely talks about. And again, sort of you carry it in your off hand as sort of your default carry position so that you're ready to go. The next thing he talks about in this section is how to fight another montante. So when fighting another montante, he says people will disagree with him on this. Um, he mentions that people will disagree with this opinion, but that you should only thrust with the montante. So you should not be throwing with this weapon tahos and reveses and those kind of actions. He says you only thrust, nails up, nails down, and keep in the middle and you will test. So testing is something I've not gone over in the single sword yet, but it's essentially using the end of your weapon to basically press the opponent's weapon to see what they're going to do. Are they going to attack? Are they going to panic? Are they going to basically just yield? And if something comes to your inside, much as we learned in single sword, you defend it nails up. If it comes to the outside, you defend it nails down. Um, when gripping the, the montante, he actually goes into that in his next chapter. Um, but your hand is going to be near the pommel, not on the pommel, not grabbing the pommel, near the pommel. The other hand is near the cross, 
He says when fighting, it's unnecessary for it to go out to the thirds. So you don't really need to grab it here. Um, so those are the main principles he goes over in his first chapter. Um, how to hold the montante, don't be too fancy with it. Um, be heavy and measured in your stance, have a good stance, and uh, don't leave evidence behind. And another key note he goes into is there are rules of the montante, and he says if you're surrounded in a wide street, don't use the rule for narrow alleyways. If you're in a narrow alleyway, don't use the rule for guarding goods. Uh, that seems kind of common sense, but clearly there was enough of a problem with it that he's like, do the rule for the situation. That's why they're called rules, is, is basically what he says. So those are sort of the key general advices he gives in the beginning uh, for describing this weapon. And he gives that very basic way of how to fight with the montante against another montante. And that's the advice he basically has, is to keep to the middle, defend thrust from this side, nails up, defend thrust from this side, nails down, test or not test if necessary. Um, so that sort of concludes our first chapter. Um, next video, we're going to be talking about our first actual rule called as such, and that will be, um, that will be surrounded in a very narrow street. Thank you.